what we're doing. We gotta pull the studs out. We'll put them in the new head. Transfer the studs over, put the manifold on. And then we gotta pull the rest of this apart. But before we do all that, let's look at what happened when the timing belt broke. And what we're gonna see a bunch of valves bent. These valves are all bent. You can see the light shining through. They're all intake valve bent also. Here's the passenger side head. Couple of bent valves. Bent valve, bent valve, bent valve. Those look good. Once we get the parts transferred to the new cylinder head, we gotta pull this cover off and run beads of silicone along the edges or it'll seep oil. So when I get all that done, we'll be back. So I just removed the camshaft cradle and while you have this off, you gotta turn the camshafts in a, in a certain direction to make it easier to get the tool onto the cylinder heads. You gotta put a tool, just, just a quick look, it's a little camshaft lock tool. We'll get into that later. But you set the um, cams in the right position and you come along here and you put silicone all along the edges and prevent it from leaking oil will seep through that no matter how good that machine fit is and the machine shops do not put anything on that so you don't you don't know you, they look great you put it on the car and next thing you know you got an oil leak and it think it's the valve cover and it's not it's the it's in between the cradle of the camshafts. All right, we got the silicone around the edges, spark plug holes. We got more silicone. Just gonna make sure you make sure your camshafts are pointing in the right direction, which according to the shop manual, this is correct. Just set that back on there and tighten it down as tight as you can. I like to spray the copper spray gasket on all the thin metal pieces that seal up everything. Not the exhaust gasket, but on these little, I've had these leaks pretty bad in the past uh, without any kind of sealing on it. So these just kind of go on back here like that. You can see we got all the bolts torqued down the spec. Yes, you do want to torque them the spec. And we will get these bolts. All right, now that we've got all the bolts, put them in. And we'll torque these down. Also, these are just the rear sensors. But it can, to prevent oil leaks on these, this, this car, you do not want to have an oil leak after you do all this work. That's the 
for sure. It's a lot of work to do. And then to have an oil leak. So I'll get that tightened down. We'll get the front one on. And we'll pick it back up and from there. All right, got the heads all built, ready to put back on the car. These bolts go in after there's a pipe that comes along here. Yep. Got the air diverters on. Camshafts are pointed in the right direction. Yep, all ready to go. I got the old ones, they need to be boxed up and sent back to Clearwater, Florida. Put all the bent valves, but I'll send those back in a day or two. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have nothing else on there that I need. And soon I'll be bolting these back on and getting the car back on the road. All right, we're about to bolt on the cylinder heads. Got number three cylinder, top dead center. Got that plug in, locked everything down. Everything is clean, ready to go back together. New cylinder heads are all cleaned up, transferred over all the parts and waiting to paint the Paint the uh, head gaskets with the copper coat. Using the old copper mega gasket. Oil leaks are always a problem, and I don't like oil leaks, so I try to do my best to make sure nothing leaks on any car. So yeah, this uh, let's get to it. After I let them tack up a little bit, just give them a little bit of time to flash over. I come back with a nice heavier coat. Just one last coat because I'm running out of it and I don't really need it for anything else on this car. It's not enough to do a second job. Maybe give it a good dusting on both sides. Now your head gaskets are ready to be set on the block and immediately bolt the heads on. All right, head gaskets are on the block. About to grab the cylinder heads from over there, set them on. We have our special tools that you got to be able to reach down into the cylinder heads with, and we got the right ones. Got the new new head bolts by the OE. OE. Got both wrench ready. We got our secondary wrench. Uh, let me get the cylinder heads on and start getting them tightened down. Alright, take two. At the 1,720,000 20, turns of the wrench right here, I got all the all the bolts just hand tight, just just little, just enough to get the head seated down. Because we're only going to torque it down to 30 foot pounds before we do a 180 degree complete turn on top of that, and that's it. That's 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 how you torque the heads down. These stretch bolts, these newer cars. That's how they are. So yeah, we're gonna torque it down to 30 foot-pounds and then 
each bolt will get a 180 degree pull to torque the heads down and then that'll be it for the torque of the heads and then we can move on to putting the timing belt on and I will show you all of that all right so I know it looks exactly the same as it did before but now the heads are pre-torqued to 30 foot pounds and I'm about to do I'm gonna do 90 exactly the same but I got all the pre-torque done and I'm about to just go ahead and do 90 degrees at a time and then come back and do another 90 degrees and that'll be a 180 on the head bolts to stretch them pull it down tight we'll do that on both sides and then we'll get the cams locked in and get set up to do the timing belt I'm waiting on exhaust gaskets for the rear um, so I don't want to put too much together so I can't get my hands back there to get them set onto manifolds but I didn't want to wait another five days to, to get these heads bolted on there's plenty to do up here and to get this thing back on the road I need to get it off my lift because this is like you know the main door it's in blocking everything got cars everywhere this thing is just sitting here not getting worked on I need to get it fixed so that's why we are going to get these done while we're waiting on the other parts and uh, we'll get a bunch of it back together uh, waiting on our next day to be able to work on this all right we've got the heads all torqued completely now we got to put these um, cam locks in this is going to be fun um, trying to do that with uh, one hand <laughs> and we know we know that cylinder number three and cylinder number five are at top dead center and we know where the lobes are so those valves don't open the other valves that they open it doesn't matter they're not going to touch the piston it's just three three and five that are going to touch the that would possibly touch a piston but we're not we know we're not going to do that so let me get set up to get the cams locked all right so you see i temp had to temporarily put the cogs on so i can turn the camshafts enough to get this started i've got to tighten it up unlike this side this side's you just got to slide it in get a light you just, uh, you just gotta get it on both cams got it on that one got it on that one and then as you tighten it up as you tighten to lock it in so now you have the all right before i was rudely interrupted by a phone call cut my video off so yeah now we got the crankshaft locked camshafts will be locked we'll get ready to put that timing belt on all right we'll just start putting on these Middle frames now we got the cylinder heads bolted down. These guys go on here. Metal shields. We're gonna put them on both sides and can't really do it one-handed, so I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Today we're gonna get these exhaust manifolds bolted up to the exhaust pipes it's way down there so I'm gonna stick the ratchet down there and get those started same thing on this side very tight to get the top bolt on these exhaust manifolds but that's just the way it is on, on these cars the fun ones Let's see if we can get this guy down in there
can't see, but it's on it. Something fell. I don't know what that was. Yeah, I really can't get you guys in there. There's a, you see the gold nut. Get the light on, maybe. Can you get the light on? Ooh, upside down. You guys are upside down. See where the bolt is, the nut. And I got it somewhat tight. I'm gonna go on the bottom, tighten up the two bottom ones on both sides and come back and finish tightening the top side. Now we're underneath the car and let's see. I got the tool on the nut. I ran these nuts on an old manifold all the way back and then all the way out just to break in the nuts so they're not so difficult to get on because they are locking locking nuts and they'll be just fine to, to reuse again and they'll all be the same size before they wasn't all the same size and I think I lost them anyway so as you can see that one just ran up pretty far and that was just by twisting it with the with the tool right there but I'm gonna run them in with an air ratchet and then get on the top and finish tightening them up. Here's the other side. Seems like a little bit easier to get to, but it's all about getting a tool in there to, to turn them. back and check on my hand. I put new nuts on these difficult exhaust bolts because you'll mess them up even though they're new at least they uh, will come off again one time all right everything is tight on the exhaust pipes up and down top and bottom however you want to say it got it back up in there with a wrench be able to get your hand around the side through the through the axle hole and get a wrench in there and tighten everything up you just can't film up and down while you're trying to do all that it's this car is tight everything is in a tight spot same thing on this side you can get your hand through there and uh, get a wrench on everything up top got them tight with a with the air ratchet this is actually new exhaust pipes i put on here welded this little piece back on there because it was too short to make it there this one made it with this one you know, aftermarket uh catalytic converters so the car doesn't have a check engine light or well, didn't before the time it belt broke but uh yeah stay tuned maybe a part two because i don't not sure how long this video is going to be, but I don't want to have too long. So it might be a part two right after this. Now that the heads are all fully installed, 
time to do the timing belt. Put the intake on, valve covers, put the front lock carrier back on, and uh, get this thing running. It's been too long. All right, we got the brand new timing belt from Volkswagen, which is Audi. Lotus 3.0. First time looking at it. There's your part number. All right, we're gonna get, we're gonna go ahead and get it set up. Timing belt installation on this is it's really complicated you gotta all these spin they don't they don't lock in like a normal cog or you know with a positive lock on it they, they flew so you gotta put the timing belt on and then tighten the timing belt as you tighten this stuff up. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. Alright, got the timing belt all in place. Been reading over the tightening sequence. There's a special way of going about it. It's, you got to and it starts right here. Step one is to take this guy right here. We're gonna take him loose. We'll take him loose. It's already loose. And then uh, we got this special tool right here. Which is going to grab into these little pins right here and get them turned around like that. But it says to turn it clockwise. Come on. A little motor mounts in the way down here, it's trying to get the wrench around. Turn it clockwise until it lines up. with the water pump exactly and then we just tighten up that bolt get my tool bit. that was a fail all right let's try that again we'll put a little bit more tension put a little bit more tension on that and get it We'll get it pushed around. Try to get the tool on it. All right. Got the tool on it. Turn it around. Now we got a little more tension on it. Take our torque wrench. Put it the right way. 45 Newton meters. And we just tighten it up a little bit at a time. Let's make sure that. Just want 
is the water pump right there behind my hand. We're in line with that. So we just run the torque wrench down. Hold the tool. Might just put you down. Set you up. Put you right there. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, close enough. Get the tool lined up. Hold the tool. Tighten it up. Step one. Step two. Take the tool. And what that does is kind of set the set the, t the cogs into the teeth of the belt. You can see when you torque that. And then we go around and tighten up the cam cogs. And at the same time, we're making sure that the belt tension is tight. So now we got step one done, getting this lined up, torqued down tight, in line with that. I went around and just ran these in, just barely snugged them up to where they still move. They still move. And we're about to pull the pin on the, the grenade to tighten the belt. And then we got a torque these down to uh you know the torque spec i'm gonna go look that up in a minute first things first we're gonna pull the pin and get that that all tight so now that the belt is tight we can go around and get these torqued to spec and um, once all that's done, we can pull the pin out the, the engine block that's holding the crankshaft, remove our tools that are locking the camshafts, rotate the motor several times to make sure that you know nothing locks up, nothing, nothing touches, nothing binds. I went around and double checked my camshaft positions made sure that everything is in line the way it's supposed to be because you don't you make a mistake you, you the motor's done you gotta pull it all back apart and do it over again <laughs> and uh that's not fun doing it twice so take your time and make sure everything is going together the correct way so now we've got to do just take another special tool, insert it into the exhaust camshaft, put it in there. See, it gets, a, it gets these little grooves it slides into. Take that. Grab our inch pound torque wrench. You've got to set to 10 Newton meters. And you just you turn. Just make sure that that inside there is all the way to that way. Same thing on this side. The exhaust can turn it until it locks in right there. And make sure that inside there is turned.
I'm gonna take these loose just a touch, just to make sure that it is turning. And then after I do this, it's 100 Newton meters to uh, tighten all four cam bolts. And that's the install of the timing belt on a 3.0 Audi. All right, went ahead and torqued all these bolts after we took our special tool and made sure the adjustment of the camshafts are in the correct position. Went ahead and tightened to 100 Newton meters, which I got a foot pounds torque wrench, so it converted it over like 73, 74 pounds, foot pounds. So I went ahead and did it at 75 foot pounds of torque. Everything's tightened down to what do you say? And now we can take the locking of the motor loose and go ahead and rotate it and make sure that nothing's going to hit the valves, ain't going to hit the pistons and all that good stuff. Everything should be in time. And if all that's good, we'll go ahead and throw our covers on, get the motor sealed up, put our intake on, get all the wiring hooked up, change the oil, put the lock, yeah, put the car completely back together because you can't start it because transmission fluid will fly out. And so you got to put the car all the way back together to fire it up for the first time. And that will be coming soon.